I didn't think I'd make it to 19. No, I didn't have some sort of terminal illness. And no, I wasn't in a tragic accident. I was depressed, self-destructive, and suicidal. I remember this starting back in middle school, when I would look around and I would notice how I looked and acted different from everybody else. I never felt comfortable around my peers. I never felt comfortable with who I was as a person. I would go to school and I would fake this smile, I would fake this demeanor, because nobody wants to be friends with the girl who's uncomfortable. Nobody wants to be friends with the sad girl. I would pretend to be this person at school only to go home and do things that today I am not proud of. I was bulimic in middle school. I was 13, 14 years old and making myself throw up every chance I got. It gave me this thrill, this sense of control that nothing else in my life did. I couldn't control when I was sad or when I was happy. I wasn't able to control my random panic attacks or mood swings but I was able to control this, and I liked that. The summer going into high school after eighth grade was a difficult one. It got to the point where bulimia didn't give me the sense of control that, that I used to enjoy, that, that feeling of this thing is mine. So I turned to self-harm, cutting. I kept this all hidden because, again, nobody wants to be around the sad girl or the girl with problems. And I didn't know what it would do to my family if they found out. I never cut myself with the intention of dying, but I knew that if it had gotten to that point, I wouldn't care. I remember the first time that I ever attempted to take my own life. I attempted an overdose on pain on painkillers and only to wake up the next day with an excruciating headache alive and mad at myself. Mad at myself because I couldn't succeed in this this attempt to end my own life. I was a failure in every other aspect of my life, but when I could finally relieve myself of that pain, relieve everybody else of that pain, I was unsuccessful. The time between then and the second time I attempted suicide is a blur. The second time was my rock bottom. I woke up in my own vomit and I wasn't scared. I was upset, numbed, to the point where I didn't see a purpose at all. That was my rock bottom. However, the good thing about being at rock bottom is that from there, there's nowhere to go but up. The following weekend, I actually went on a retreat with some friends where, for the first time, I felt hope. I figured out what it was like to have people be there for you and understand you. And my mind was open to a lot of things. One being that other people, even though they wouldn't necessarily have the same story as you, also know what it's like to feel pain and also know what it's like to feel at rock bottom. I didn't say anything during that weekend because I didn't have to. I made a promise to myself that I was done. Fast forward to the next year, my junior year in high school, I switched schools. And <clears throat> I met an incredible group of people who, unfortunately, a lot of us struggled with the same things. Self-injury, addiction, eating disorders. But we created a support system. And it worked for a while, only for some of us to realize that, yeah, we can be there for each other and we can support each other as much as we want, but when you're home behind closed doors, the only thing you have is your addiction. 
At least that's what I thought. One night, I remember coming home from school and going on the internet and figuring out, and trying to figure out if there were different ways to, I guess, deal with the temptations to relapse or deal with the constant cloud of depression that follows you and how can I stop myself from wanting to cut? How can I stop myself from hating everything um, about myself? And I came across this website, recoveryourlife.com, and I saw the Butterfly Project. What is this? I clicked on it, and the idea seems a little bit childish at first. The concept was when you felt like you wanted to cut or relapse, you took a marker and drew a butterfly on yourself. And you weren't allowed to cut until the butterfly was gone. So I thought, this could work. The following day, I went to school, went up to a dear friend of mine, rolled up her sleeve, drew a butterfly on her arm, and put my name under it. This is me. You cannot kill this butterfly. I proceeded to roll up my sleeve, draw a butterfly, and write her name under it. We spread this butterfly project concept to a lot of our friends, and it worked. Not just for cutting, but for things like eating disorders and drug addiction and just general thoughts of loneliness or, or sadness. It worked. I remember my photography club moderator coming up to me and saying, this thing you're doing, it's working. You need to take it to the next level. You need to share it with the world. I looked at him and I laughed because I'm only 17. How am I supposed to take this concept that a lot of people are gonna find childish and put it out to the world? There's no way I can do that. I don't have the means, I don't have the voice. Only then to go home that night, on the internet again, to Tumblr. Tumblr is a worldwide blogging site that a lot of people use for different reasons, to share ideas, to share stories. And I looked for things on the Butterfly Project, and I couldn't find any. So I thought, this is my chance. This is my chance to start something new. So that night, I created the Butterfly Project blog with this simple URL, butterflyproject.tumblr.com. And I left the ask box open for anybody who may need advice or just had any questions. And I put up this set of rules. Rule number one, when you feel like you want to cut, take a marker or a pen and draw a butterfly on the place where the self-harm occurs. Rule number two, name the butterfly after a loved one or someone who wants you to get better. Number three, no scrubbing the butterfly off. You have to let it fade away naturally. If you cut before the butterfly is gone, it dies. Your goal is to let it live. Rule number five, another person is allowed to draw butterflies on you. And these are extra important because you need to take care of them. My favorite rule, even if you do not cut or do not, are not familiar with self-harm, feel free to draw a butterfly anyways in support of those who do and in support of this project. Like I said, the following week there were over 100 followers of this simple blog that I had created. I just took an idea and put it up. This blog gave people a place to share themselves in a way that they weren't able to before. They were able to ask questions, submit their stories to an anonymous source. I didn't put my name on the blog. I didn't feel like I had to. I felt like those people who were writing stories and submitting pictures didn't need a face. They didn't need another person. They just, it could have been whoever they wanted to be. The Butterfly Project gives people a sense of hope. It gave them a sense of their people, just like me, who feel the same things I do, and they're not afraid to share their story, so why should I? Why should I be afraid to share who I am? A year and a half into running the blog, I started noticing myself um, retract a little bit. And I started finding some of the questions, um, I guess, 
triggering in a way. So I decided to close the ask box and just leave it open for submissions like the ones you see above me of pictures and stories. In the time where I had the ask box closed, I also made this decision to seek professional help. And I can honestly say that to this point, it was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made and it's something that I recommend to all of the followers on this blog. Through seeking professional help and through the Butterfly Project, I've gained the courage to be able to do things like this. This is not easy. It is not easy to stand up here and tell you guys everything that I've always wanted to keep hidden. But because of the support of the followers, the Butterfly Project has 14,780 followers. And it is not, it is not an insignificant thing. It's sad that this number of people need something like this. But at the same time, it's great because they're getting help. And they're finding other people who, who feel the same way they do. The Butterfly Project blog reaches 187 countries and is translated into 120 languages. It's hard sometimes to look at it and think that it was me who put it up there. It's hard to think that sometimes someone, one idea, one supportive group of people can create a movement so monumental. But it's possible. I would be lying to you if I said that every day I wake up and that I'm happy. That seeing a therapist and seeing a psychiatrist worked entirely. Because the road to recovery is a very, very difficult one. There are speed bumps, but I'm almost there. This past summer, I made the bold decision to get a tattoo of a butterfly on my wrist. This butterfly's name is Hope. And it's a reminder to myself that I'm done. That hurting myself is no longer an option. And because of the Butterfly Project, because of all the followers and the great people I surround myself with, I can share today with you all something that the Butterfly Project has taught me. And it's this. What the caterpillar sees as the end is only the beginning for the butterfly. Thank you.